Hello and welcome back to ATEC Hunting. Today we've got the FX Panthera. We're going to hunt a little bit with it and talk about this gun. So sit back and enjoy. So the FX Panthera comes in a very nice hard case that is pre-cut. As you can see, everything has got its place, even a space for your bipod. There's a slot there for extra magazine. There's a slot for your silencer and they've included a, a slot for an extra um, 380cc bottle over there as well. I'm just using this for extra storage at the moment. Um, but yeah, very nicely done. I really like it and everything just fits super, super nicely in here. Yeah, so let's take this baby out. Let's quickly go through this gun. So I've got a Donny FL Tatsu on here. This gun is actually very quiet as well, even without a silencer, because this is quite a beefy shroud. They do include an end cap if you don't want to use a silencer. And then we've got this nice M-lock rail over here. Now I don't have an Arca bipod, so what I did is I just bought a, a M-lock Picatinny mount, which I've put underneath there. I don't know if you can see there. There's all the M-lock slots down there as well, so you can put this rail anywhere you like. And then I've got the Element Optics Titan on here. Um, I think the scope uh, works really well with this gun for long range shooting because that's what this gun is actually all about is long range accurate shooting. And then yeah, standard FX Panthera, 380cc bottle, adjustable cheek piece, adjustable uh, uh, buttstock on there. And then the standard included vertical grip as well. Really nice setup. Um, this gun is made for PRS shooting. Um, it's made for competition shooting so it's not that ideal hunting rifle but prs and hunting goes hand in hand so it should do pretty well the only thing that is a disadvantage in this gun is shot count but we'll talk about that a little bit later on so we're going to shoot the 26 grain javelins as you notice these are new containers the slugs inside hasn't changed we just decided to upgrade the packaging a bit make them a little bit easier to get your fingers in there so a little bit fatter and a little bit more stable when you handle them and put them on your bench or whatever so yeah the magazines are loaded you'll also notice that these are the standard size magazine that goes in the crown and the wildcat and everything the only difference here it's a little bit wider and all that extra width has been incorporated into the lid so as you can see there's a deeper cavity in there which means you can load longer slugs in this magazine so your spacing in your in your breech here is much wider which allow for this wider magazine so you can fit much much more longer slugs in here so a very cool idea by fx to do that um, easy way to increase the magazine size and you can also use your older magazine that comes with your crown and your wildcat um, because all you need is just the lid and th these will be sold separately there's also a few guys that provide 3d printed ones that you can use on your older magazine so that they will fit in the pantera so yeah really nice touch there okay first thing to do is check your speed so i've got the fx crony mounted on the silencer over there you can also permanently mount your fx crony on one of the m-lock slots over here there's little adapters that you can use for that and then you've got this little remote screen now that seamlessly connect to the crony and FX have actually included a slot here at the back where you can mount this crony permanently so you can have your, your crony and your little screen permanently mounted on your gun so when you do competition shooting you will know the speed of every single shot so you can monitor your gun seamlessly throughout the shoot and yeah this is a very nice touch as well I'm just going to use it on the side here for now just to check what my speed are you can see there just need to put the crony on and there you go connect it you don't have to press any buttons you just switch on switch on and it connects and all we're going to do now is just check the speed of the gun we're going to do the first cold shot which will probably be a little bit off yeah that's a little bit off Nine and nine, we're gonna increase the speed a little bit. Not too high, a little bit lower. Yeah, that's exactly where I want it. Perfect. I'm gonna increase the fine tuner a little bit. Not too much. <laughs> 
I want it about 9.30. Not further down. 9.35, that's perfect. So that's why it's important to check your speed. So when I set this gun up at home, it was pretty hot and it was in the afternoon. So the air density, everything was um, much different to what it is right now. So my scope tape and everything is set up for 930 feet per second. So checking the speed in the morning quickly and just fine tuning using the FX fine tune system here to get your speed exactly where your ballistics are set up for is super important because conditions change and I'll actually check my speed periodically as the day goes on because temperatures will change, air density will get less, things like that and that all has an effect on your speed. So with this little system here I can quickly check that my speed is perfectly spot on and when you have this permanently set up on the gun with the screen mounted over here and you're shooting competition you can actively monitor what your gun is doing throughout the whole competition to make sure your speed isn't dropping or increasing as conditions around you change. It's absolutely groundbreaking stuff and really, really cool. With the tuning and all of that out of the way, it was time to zero the gun and head out for the first shot. Maggie took the lead and found a duff sitting on the ground. Yo, off with his head. First one for me with the Panthera. It's super accurate. This dove ducks as the shot goes off and almost got lucky. It wasn't enough though and Maggie gets him in the head. Okay, that was the very first shot. Massive fat there. I think we're gonna quickly go and check what it looks like. Yeah, first kill for the Panthera. Before we go fetch that one, there's some pigeons on the roof here, so we can't let that opportunity go by. This is where things went a bit wrong. As I moved down to get in position, I carried the gun on my side and accidentally hit the barrel on a brick pretty hard. I immediately checked for damage but couldn't find any. I did not think much of it and continued to get ready for the shot. Thud on the roof, yeah, so he's down as well, about 42 meters. The hit on the barrel caused a significant POI shift, resulting in the shot impacting very low. But the pigeon dropped, so we continued. So far, I can say that the Pantera is not the best um, gun to, to carry around. It is pretty heavy and it is pretty long. So yeah, it's not a very comfortable carry around gun, but um, for PRA shooting and stuff, that's not really what you're gonna do. So what we're doing with it now is actually not what it's designed for, but you can use it in this. You just have to be careful with the length of your barrel that you don't hit it on rocks when you carry it. You have a nice bag to cushion on your shoulder because it get, gets pretty heavy. Right, here's Maggie's kill. The head is still intact though, but you okay. probably saw yeah, that. Yeah, it was that I saw. <laughs> but it is definitely in the head, as you can see there. Straight to the head. Nice shot. So we spotted a bunch of starlings on the tree, um, but we need a bit of distance on them. And we saw that tire down there, so we're going to move down there and get them from there. meters and down he goes stalling the gun hits low again and slowly but surely I started to notice that something is wrong but Maggie gets an opportunity on a pigeon and decided to go for it yo okay <laughs> dead on at um, 50 meters after this shot, we decided to slowly move back to the truck and double check the zero on this gun. It was something I knew we had to do, knowing that I bumped the barrel. We did keep our eyes open on the way there for any short distance opportunity, and surely enough, Maggie spotted a starling. Yes, that was a good one. 
the gun hits low again even though we compensated by dialing a bit more so it was time to head back to zero the gun luckily this was a quick and easy process okay zero is checked easy to remove your cap here toolless nice thing about element optics put it back on and put the cap back on it's easy as that with the gun zeroed again, we decided to head back to that tire because it seemed to be a very good spot to shoot from. And sure enough, Maggie had opportunity on a few pigeons. Yeah, okay, no, that yeah. one He's dead. went with a huge bang. Okay, so it was 62 meters, but there's another one on the roof. Okay. I think that one went through the neck, 55 meters. Finally, the gun is shooting where it is supposed to and this pigeon gets hit in the chest. On the second one, Maggie aims a little too far right, but luckily hits him in the neck. I then get an opportunity on a duff, but was quickly disrupted by an old friend. There's a tweak in front of this one, so I'm hoping I'm clearing it. Uh, another one. No, uh, that's not a pigeon. Ah, uh, the falcon scared him away. <laughs> With no more activity at this location, we decided to move on and get out of the sun. And we found a nice shady spot with loads of sparrow activity. Let's quickly talk about the balance of this gun. Now, as you can see, it is almost perfectly balanced. It still wants to move a little bit to the back there if I touch it, but I can get it to balance on the back there. As you can see, it's sitting freely on the back there. Um, you also have to keep in mind that I have the heavy Accutec bipod on the front, which I will always have on there as a, as a weight. And then I also have the heavy scope cam system. Well, it's not super heavy, but it does add a bit of weight to the back there. Um, but the gun is almost perfectly balanced. I would just like to have a little bit more weight in the front. So one or two weights and it will be perfect. Now looking at the back here, you can see there's quite a lot of adjustability and a nice touch as well. If you look closely, yes, FX have put a nice indication marker here for you. So when you adjust your buttstock, you can always put it at the exact same spot. And when you put your gun back in the case and you need to put it back in, you can comfortably do that without losing confidence of where your length of pull was. So you can easily put it back to where it was. There's also the, the cheek rise up here, which I now have on, it in, on its maximum setting because I've got my scope mounted pretty high. And I've done that so that I can do long range shooting at some point. But yeah, I really like the nice details they've put in here. I mean, they thought of everything. That over there is something that keeps your confidence going, which is super, super important in competition shooting. Ooh, 65 meters, nice loud pop. Now the gun is spot on and this one goes down in an explosion. One made a bit of a, a cartwheel. This sparrow suffers the same fate and our confidence were building again. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> 65 meters. This one was getting ready to jump, but he was too slow. Another one down, 51 meters. This one had slightly better reflexes, but it was still not enough for the Pantera. <laughs> nice sparrow poppers. That was 44 meters. And this one had no idea what was about to happen. I don't know if I've caught him. Looked like it fell to the back. It must have been just a slight nick or something. This was just a nick and you can actually see the slug bouncing off his head. We've got about one shot left in the magazine now, meaning we shot 17 shots and we had a 240 bar full. So 
you can see there we're now exactly on 200 bar um, left on the tank and the regulator is set at 150 bar so we've got about 50 bar left which means we can easily get another magazine of shots through here um, yeah so with 26 grain slugs two magazines that's pretty okay for hunting that's not too bad we actually forgot the other magazine at the truck I just uh, realized that now so we have to go back to the truck anyway so even though we have 200 bar left in the tank we're gonna fill everything up and fill up the magazines again while we are walking back to the truck I just thought of something you guys probably notice it there is no plenum really on this gun but there actually is and it sits right here in the barrel so it's an over barrel plenum and it actually stiffens up the barrel as well because all that pressurized air keeps the barrel completely stiff and because it's a plenum the air pressure inside here is always 150 bar or whatever you set your regulator on so this never changes meaning your point of aim is always exactly at the same spot um, so you can see this like as a super duper barrel stiffness system as well it works really well so the plenum actually goes from here to about here which is pretty big and you get them in different sizes as well depending on what um, your application is for the gun filling the pantera was quick and easy and then we went straight back into action as maggie spotted a duff in a nearby tree she didn't waste any time and got ready for the shot As you can see, this is what makes this gun so, so special, that balance point and the fact that you can just plop it on the back like that with this nice flat Arca uh, rail down here means that you can quickly just put the gun down and with confidence take down the shot. So we didn't have a lot of time on that because we're filming as well, we're making a video so we have to do everything very quickly. And having a gun like this that you have confidence in just putting down like that on a, a tire or an obstacle like that makes a world of difference. Okay, so we are on the move again. And there's already a dove or a pigeon or something on the roof there. It looks like a dove. So Maggie's going to set up here. Yay! <laughs> okay. Uh, a bit of a gory shot, but yeah at 56 meters i just saw a puff of dust or something <laughs> it uh, like it's not dust <laughs> <laughs> maggie hits this dove right through the off switch resulting in a puff of pink mist another thing worth mentioning is that this gun now features a brand new redesigned valve called the short impulse valve which actually sits right behind the the barrel here so there's a much more direct airflow which means the valve doesn't need to travel that far and that greatly helps with consistency between shots I mean it's a the shorter the impulse the better so yeah this is a, a really nice system it also makes a gun feel completely different to any other PCP where the, the recoil that is there especially if you shoot the heavy slugs is completely straight to the back into your shoulder which is a, a very nice nice feeling Yes, okay, that was the pop I needed at 33 meters. Maggie completely destroys the stuff, even blowing off his wing. I was up next and I had my sights on two very busy pigeons. That was loud. Very short distance, 35 meters. Uh, were, they were pretty active. I think they were busy with their mating dance <laughs> and got him down. I got him right through the wing and vitals and he goes down in a puff of dust. Hmm. No pigeon. With blood. It goes this way. I can see there's more blood there. 
this, you know what that is. That's something else. Ah, here he is. <laughs> so he must have walked a bit or something. But he's dead. So yeah, right through the neck vital area. I thought he was completely dead, but he must have had some energy left in him. But we could follow the blood trail and found him behind the wheel. Oh. We then went back to the other side and found a few doves in a tree. Yo! Got him. <laughs> 50 meters. It was difficult to find him there and my uh, scope camera, you can hear it dies again. So the battery is done. So I think we are done for the day. <laughs> I had to move pretty quickly on this one to get the shot down before the GoPro died and then I repositioned to get a shot on another one but then he flew away as we got there. Oh, very He's gone anyway, he flew away. So yeah, I think we're going to call it there because yeah, we can't continue filming. Um, we've got enough shots anyway, we had a great time. So yeah, let's move back to the truck and uh, end off and talk about this gun a little bit more. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Panthera. We did a hunt with it now, but I can say for sure that this gun was not designed to be a pure hunter. This is designed as a competition PRS rifle. You can hunt with it if you can live with that it's a, a little bit heavy and a little bit difficult to carry. It's pretty long, um, but if you're a competition shooter and you do a little bit of hunting on the site, it is absolutely possible to hunt with it. As I said, you just have to take into account those few little negative things about it in the hunting field but as a competition gun as a bench gun as a PRS gun this thing is absolutely perfect for that it's got the length it's got the weight it's got the M lock slots the rails the barricade stop everything you need as a PRS and a competition rifle bench bench rest rifle you can either even tether it live on a tank as well that the tethering, the faster fitting the back here is made perfectly for that perfect position for it. The adjustability, everything on this is just, uh, it screams competition. Um, I myself am not a massive competition shooter. I probably do one competition here and that's RMAC and that's about it. I like to hunt, I like to be out on the farms and, and do things like that. It's just more exciting for me. So. For me personally, I probably wouldn't go with this gun. I would probably go with a Crown or a Wildcat or something like that. But if you are a competition shooter, if that is your main purpose of what you're going to do with this gun, then absolutely go with this. You're not going to get anything better. I think this is even better than the impact at bench and and PRS shooting, especially PRS shooting. Uh, the impact on this. We'll see what happens at RMAC this year or at the competitions this year, but I think the impact finally has a true competitor. Um, maybe they're equal on the bench, I don't know, but PRS, this is definitely a winner. I mean, this narrow profile over here to put it through barricades and all those things, that, that is what you want. That's why the bottle is back here as well. And it has to be a short bottle so that you can fit everything in here, but it's more than enough shots. I mean, 26 grain javelins, 40 shots, you don't really need more than that. Now, if you want to buck the wind a little more, you can push it up to 40 grain, even longer slugs like that. I think a 45 grain will still fit in this magazine. And it's got the power to do that as well. I mean, this regulator runs very low for what, it, what power it can put out. So it's got massive potential in that sense. And if you tether it like big ball competitions and things like that, you've got unlimited shots. You can shoot really heavy stuff with it especially in 2.5 and 30 cal as well. So I think for big bore and PRS, this is probably the rifle that's going to win those competitions. Bench rest, it's got a very good chance, but the impact is still there. It's still a very good gun. Um, I think the impact as an all-around hunting bench rest shooting gun is probably a little bit better if you're 50-50 on that. Uh, but if competition is your thing, this is the gun. Before I forget, this is called a dynamic block. So you're going to see this block in a lot of other applications. Um, even with the Panthera as it stands over here, you can remove the barricade stop here and put an extra bottle adapter on here. Then you can truly make it a, a nice hunter, especially with a 600 barrel or a 500 barrel with another 480cc up here. 
and a 380cc back here that would be a killer hunter rifle I think still gonna be a little bit on the heavy side but you'll get massive amounts of shots massive amounts of power that might actually be a very very good system so this block you'll see in a lot of other applications new guns are going to come out maybe even a pistol or, or something like that it's truly dynamic and the way it's designed so the possibilities with this is going to be endless for fx and that's why they went with this whole system there's a lot of thought put into the initial design of this gun this is the first platform that was done on the dynamic block but i can promise you you're going to see this dynamic block in a lot of other new guns uh, for the future well that is it we are done for the day our scope cam is out of battery so we have to end the video here so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit the like button remember to subscribe and then i hope you enjoyed the fx panthera as i said this is a very dynamic platform loads more to come i think it's a brilliant rifle for competition shooting that's absolutely what it was designed for so yeah we'll see you next time cheers mm -hmm.